Hey, hey, we're back. Hey, now. Yeah, a little Howard Stern for you. <laughs> we are back, ready to rock it. What are we going to do on today's episode, Alan? We are looking straight at each other. This is the first time in a long time we actually look right at each other. And I have to say, we're getting older. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, I mean, you know, you've done okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Nice try. <laughs> As you said, the chickens have come home to roost. They have, yes. Caligula. So yeah. this this reminds me, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners now who weren't with us at the very beginning don't know that it was just you and me, no guests a long time ago. And we had crappy equipment and we drank a ton of beer and we just talked for hours. And then the more we talked and the more beer we drank, the more we had to pause it and run and pee. Yep, and it got to the point where it was like every fifteen minutes, and that was when, hey, maybe we should stop the recording, <laughs> right? Because we we'd say, um, Ed, edit this out. Yeah, Ed, uh, we had to go take a break. Please edit that. So we made him edit for hours, and now we got it down to a very minimal edit. He would effort. he would miss some of the edits. Oh yeah, yeah, on purpose, I th- especially when he knew he could make fun of me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's right. So it's you and me in studio. No guests today. We're gonna have a great time though. Picking off questions that we have received over the last year from different listeners, either emails or phone calls to me, asking questions. And I was telling you about some of them. You're like, you know, I think we should just have an episode where everybody can kind of hear your answers and we can kind of kick it around a little bit and and give everybody the benefit of your wisdom of my wisdom. Of course, that's of course, that's what I I mean. It is. I I think it's really cool, though, that the listeners have been so engaged. Yeah, I think it's almost almost weekly. It, we're getting almost weekly. Uh, you'll, I'll get an email. Uh, I actually just talked with another person who may actually be moving to my area, uh, which is crazy. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's kind of cool because you know, again, are we a top one percent podcast in the world? No, um, we're a top ten percent podcast, but well, top five, top five. That's yeah. right. Well, we're right on the outside, I'm looking in on that we're one. Right on the cusp. Come on. All right, we're there. But I'm still. I'm making Where's it work your out. aspirational close. Oh, my God. Hey, uh, well, you know what? More of you guys got to go out there. Give us a follow. Share this with your uh, with your friends. I'm telling you, I was just at another networking event last week where I uh, I said, hey, I got a podcast. And the guy leaned over and said, yeah, you need to listen to it. It's really good. I'm like, oh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> so that was, you know, some unsolicited feedback because I was sitting there. But of course, he wanted me to do business with him. But um, but it was still cool. So what are we going to do today? We're going to take off and hit some of those questions. And then you and I will kick around the answers and uh, share some of the stuff that uh, I shared and, and some other things that maybe I didn't share that I wanted to make sure because we are at the time of Thanksgiving uh, as we're putting this one down. So we're giving thanks to all of our listeners and everybody who's uh, hang in there, hung in there with us. Listen to what we have to say. Maybe go out there and check us out on YouTube. Our shorts are really uh, hitting pretty hard. They're kind of fun. So if you don't have the attention span to stick with us the whole time, you can go catch out a short first and then get back in your truck or go on your walk and take your dog for a walk and listen to us. And hopefully we're edutaining you, give you a little education, but we're also giving you a lot of fun. Yeah. And then I think what we're going to do after that is roll into It's that time of year when you should have already done it, some strategic planning, but we're also going into a little bit more of a rocky season. There's a little bit of doom and gloom out there when it comes to the economy and what are we doing about it? So I think, I think there's going to be a lot of gold nuggets today. I think, yeah, you're right. You threw that one on me. I like that idea uh, because uh, this time every year I do do a lot of planning and get a chance to kind of look back 12 and look forward 12. And that's where you need to be if you're trying to figure out how to keep your business rolling and keep scaling and keep going up the thing. So yeah, I can't wait to get into that. But, but again, just want to say thank you to all the listeners, go out there and share this, follow with us, uh, get other friends to follow. Okay, let's get us up there. Uh, we're actually gonna do some really cool things in 24, probably do a couple of remote visits uh, and go see some people and go see some sites, uh, go see some universities, some breweries and some breweries, of course. Mm-hmm. And we're actually going to have a brewery guy come see us here later. So I'm so excited. Cool. Yep. Well, Chris, I am thankful for you. This has been a lot of fun. Well, again, I asked you to come do this, and you said, how much do I make? And I said, zero. And you said, okay, I'll do it. And then I said, well, will will there be beer there? And you're like, if you bring it. And you have. (laughs) You brought your own today. I brought my own today. But I I decided to go bourbon on the celebratory time in the uh, year. So we're going Woodford Reserve Double Oaked as we get ready to rock and roll and spew wisdom. I think you need a bigger glass. I mean, you want a mason jar? Hi, wait. Hey now. Uh this is sipping sip and shine, as I was told. Sip and shine, but yeah. you've got a, a I, half I, a gallon in well, your cup. Yeah, we we like to call it a boss. 
of Oz. <laughs> How classy. They got buttloads of class. Yep. All right. You want a question from the listeners? All right. Let's go. Number All right. One question. Here Number we one. go. Rock and roll. And this one wasn't too long ago. I, Chris, I am a property manager and I've been asked multiple times to include a handyman service. I'm thinking of starting it because I am handy and I also have a number of contractors I could refer the work to. What are things I should consider? I love that question because I've had it more than once. Uh, you're in an adjunct business and it seems like a natural fit to add in a handyman business, which I've been running now for 15 and a half years. And I would tell you, there's a lot of things to consider. The, the first part is you are a property manager and you're providing a service to your customers. Your question that you need to ask is why are they asking you for handyman services and what are they looking to accomplish? It's a big question to ask yourself. If I had all those properties, I think one of the things I didn't say this when I talked to the individual on the phone last time is I would, I would uh, go ahead and put a survey together and ask people what they're looking for. What services are they looking for? What's the timeline? What's the response that they're looking for? What do they think is an appropriate amount of money to spend with you where you don't have to have prior approval for money? So what do I mean? If they are looking for emergency services, you know, my, my, my toilet has stopped working. It's Sunday afternoon at three o'clock. I need a plumber dispatched immediately. You have to ask yourself, are you built for that? When I first started my business, I thought we would be a weekend and emergency response business, and we weren't. What has turned out you, to be- Did you think that was going to be part of your business or that or that was, okay, not I the thought whole thing? We, I didn't think, no, but I thought there would be a lot of weekends, uh, a lot of nights, a lot of, um, uh, a lot of, hey, I need you out here right now. I'm going to pay for this service. And the answer is, as a handyman, we weren't. Uh, plumbers, electricians, HVAC specialists, especially in the sub, yes. So you got to ask yourself if you're- subscriber group as you were as a property manager if they're asking for that kind of stuff can you provide that kind of service because guys who can provide that kind of service are built to respond like that they have a call center they have a dispatch they have an on-call person they have and because if you can't provide that and it gets called on you look really bad and now that starts to damage your property management brand if you do that survey and find out they're looking for just punch list items around there, one of the things that I found as a residential real estate person, you know, working in with people is that if I didn't have somebody on site to approve what the charges were going to be, it slowed us down and you couldn't get the job done. And now you're paying somebody to go there, paying them either by the hour or by the job, however you decide to do it. And you got to pay them because they aren't going out there for free. But if they go there and they say, hey, I came here to fix this door, but the door got kicked in. Good example. Um, we needed to get it uh, in, we needed to get them safe and get it boarded up. And you went, OK, it's going to be two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, um, right now I, I can't afford. I don't I don't know what that is. I have to find for my find out for my property manager or my landlord if I can pay that. Well, now your guy's dead in the water, not doing it until you can get somebody to uh, do it. So what I would say is if you did this. Get a pre-approval amount. You know, we'll do stuff up to three hundred dollars pre-approved, and we'll take care of things. Anything over above three hundred, we will go ask for it. These are a lot of detailed things that I'm giving you, but it starts with what is your group looking for, and can you provide that level of service? Even as a handyman, it's still going to be that level of service. And then you got to ask yourself if you're relying on your subcontractors, are you okay with their response time? Like, think about it, Alan, you know, you're cool if you know that I'm going to take care of something for you and you're willing to wait because, you know, I'll take care of you. But these guys don't know who we are. And so are they going to wait? So is it, it's not the, is it the tenant that's asking or is it the actual owner of the property that's asking for this? It usually is tenant driven. Really? Yep. And see, I could see an, an owner saying, hey, okay, you're my property manager. You're handling all this stuff but there's repairs that need to be made. And in that, in that case, it probably, or, or um, maybe enhancements that you want to have made. So in that case, maybe it wouldn't be as time sensitive. Enhancements, definitely not, but usually it's tenant driven hmm. um, where the tenants are asking because they're in the house and they're the ones saying, and, and I love this one too. Um, hey, I need you guys out there and you, you start to figure out why get out there and you do the job, especially with us. We don't have a, because they had a rate. rager and they put a hole in the wall and they don't want the landlord to know. Uh, or <laughs> the landlord hasn't fixed a toilet 
for a month and they're like, no, I'm not paying you another rent check until you get that toilet fixed. Mm. Now I have a motivated landlord or property uh, owner and uh, the t- because the tenant's holding the check over their head. And uh, we've been in the middle of those too. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah, not not fun. But again, if you think about it as a property manager, you're sitting on and you're doing a great transactional service for them by managing their property. And sometimes managing that property is you're also taking care of it and doing a punch list inspection. You might be doing some of that. I've seen that before. But when you dip into this business, you want to, I would say, pull your clients first and find out because it's a, it's a different transaction that if you can execute on, it'll work well. I just switched from a Pilsner to IPA and it kind of made me pucker. You got happy. I did. All right. Question number two, which is pretty similar to question number one. So I'm curious to know what the difference will be for you. Chris, I am a specialist in drywall, which God love you. And I'm uh, trying to decide if I should grow this business or get into offering handyman services and broadening my scope. So should I stay focused or should I broaden my, okay. How do I evaluate which pro- approach is the best? I think that it's a different question for me. Uh, and the reason is in the home services space, you're, if you're really good at drywall, who are your customers? And don't tell me homeowners. Who are your customers? The contractor. Probably more, more than a lot, it's a contractor. So you're really a B2B company. That means business to business. You're not a business to consumer customer uh, or uh, company. You are focused on your businesses. So if that's the model you like to work within, meaning the contractors call you to do the work, then you got to understand who your customer is because it's not the end client. I mean, they may give you a uh, grief back or not pay the general contractor, but if your contractors are your business and that's where you want to grow, that is where you need to focus because B2B marketing is way different than B2C. Yeah. So that's why uh, when he called me, that was the first question. I know I threw him a, a huge curveball. He's like, but but no, no, people ask me to do the handyman stuff while I'm there. I'm like, I get it, but that's not a business. That's just an add-on. And uh, if you want to make it a business, then you got to decide how you're going to build it. And this is what I mean. If I have Chris's drywall company and I'm CDW, CD, C, yeah, Chris's drywall company, CDC. <laughs> I'm the CDC, baby. I just made it up. Um, I was wondering where you're going with that. Um, if I'm Chris's drywall company, um, do I market that to other people? Because I will tell you the contractor or anybody who's listening to this and go, you know what? I get all my work word of mouth. I don't have to advertise one bit. Well, you know what? It's going to dry up, man. And you got to be ready for it. And you if you're going to be so negative. I am in I'm, I'm this one. I'm, I'm not negative. I'm like, be proactive and be positive about it because CDC doesn't work unless I market it to other people to get other work so I can get more drywall contracts. Now, if I want to do just drywall contracting, then I'm going to go swim where all these contractors are. I'm going to find associations, trade associations, and I'm going to go do that. But if I'm going to start offering handyman businesses and actually make a true business out of it, I got to figure out if my name is going to ring with the residents and the public and if I really want to be a B2C company. And then it's a mind shift. Uh, You have to shift into understanding how you deliver it because you might be really good at a bunch of stuff. But what happens when you start to scale and send your other guy? And your other guy doesn't do it quite like you did. Maybe Are you speaking from personal experience. Oh yeah, yeah. Is it painful? It is painful. Yeah. You know, hey, go out there. Hey, they just asked you to change out a door lock while you're doing the drywall, and you go out there and you find out that they installed the dro- the door lock exactly backwards. Yep, that's right. That's right. The uh, deadbolt <laughs> was on the inside, and the the lever was on the outside. <laughs> Maybe that's intentional. It's you're the like, murder room. Oh my gosh. So I think that's it's a big shift because you might say, well, people are asking me for it. And so there it goes. Because people ask you for it doesn't mean you should start doing it. Be intentional because if you're intentional about it, you'll have a better chance for success and it's more long term. Is there any conflict of interest? You know, you're you're trying to get uh, business from contractors. Are you somehow taking away business from them if you're doing handyman stuff? I think that's another great question. But I think as a, if I'm a GC and I got a drywall guy there and, and he can dot, uh, you, you just get one. Yeah, thanks. Um, but if 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 I'm a GC and my drywall guy says, "Hey, the customer just asked me to paint what I just did," uh, I'll, I'll ask the question, "Can you?" Mm. Well, I'll come check it. And, but if he can do it, then I don't have to get my painter out there. And it's a small drywall patch. Let's say we're, we're punching stuff out. I might have him give it a shot. So it could be an advantage. It, could, it definitely could be an advantage. But then again, I'm not marketing to consumers. I'm marketing to my my 
my existing contractor base about being able to do a few more things, hmm. but not a lot of things, a few more. That's the key thing. If, Is there such a thing as saying, Hey, thanks for asking. I don't do that, but I know somebody who does. And I refer, Oh, say, you know, a better trusted toolbox. And then they give me a commission. I like the thought process of what you just said, mm -hmm. but the referrals are a dangerous web to work in. I like this. I don't, but let me, and you make sure that you got a vetted group of people who are going to respond to your customer base because that negative referral comes back and bites you in the butt. The other thing is, if you think you're going to make a few bucks off of that, skip it. You don't need a commission. You don't need to go chase these guys down. And I'll tell you, I brought a, uh, I brought a, um, I brought, oh, I just get mad thinking about it. <laughs> but I brought a I brought a guy in to do a retaining wall because we don't do it, so we could finish off a deck because that what was happening was that the, the uh, retaining wall that was there was failing. I brought him in. And I said, "Look, I'm going to take a cut off of you, right?" As a subcontractor, and well, I didn't take my cut up front. Guess who blocked me? Never took my calls again, and that guy mm. is dead to me. Mm. And I didn't get and the hires I, slashed. Yeah, if I ever find that guy. So you got to watch this on the referral thing. And if you think you need to make some money up front and you heard me and you just went, ah, Chris, you're stupid. That's why you're, you, that's why you lost that one. Cause you should get your money up front. It is such a pain in the ass to run people down for money and stuff like that. When you could have just said, Hey, by the way, I just referred you to one of my best general contractors. Just remember that next time somebody asks you for a referral, uh, because I might be able to help you out in my specialty. Right. So you're saying really, it's probably better to just stay in your lane and scale. And when you refer, let people know you referred them. I agree with that 100%. Because you and I talk about networking all the time. Mm -hmm. But but you know what? If, if I said, hey, Alan, I got a, uh, I got a, a person who's looking for some, uh, from some industrial space. Hey, this is his name. What's going on? Alan goes, oh, I remember that. Chris uh, did that. Hey, Chris, thanks for calling. By the way, I have some squirrels getting in my attic. Um, can you help me out with that? <laughs> I had a whole family of squirrels it's in my whole, attic. It's all hypothetical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did trap five and released them across the river in Gwinnett, in Gwinnett <laughs> County. You know, you did the right thing. You're an above board, great person, and you probably were a Boy Scout leader. Because some people that maybe we know might have just drowned them in their pool. Maybe. Allegedly. <laughs> Can't convict me. Never know. I mean, I mean, the person. I yeah. heard. I heard what I did might be considered illegal. There's a lot of rules out there, man. You did the right thing. You you let them live. You you got them out. Well, because I used to release them down the street, and guess where they came? Right back home. Yeah. I they, mean, I, I they're, they're like dogs. So yeah. I figured if they can get across the river and all that traffic and get back to my house, then maybe they kind of deserve it. Maybe you could make them a little condo. Yeah, I a little so. bed and breakfast. I think so. As it were, put out some peanut butter for them. All right. Chris, what software do you use to run your business? Is it successful? And how hard is it to implement? This is a great question that was asked, and I keep getting it asked. And I see it in Facebook groups. And I'll tell you what, not every software is built for everybody, but I wrote this in my book. Oh, your book. We haven't talked about your book in a while. What's the name of it, Chris? Boy, that was that was almost genuine. Maybe we should do take <laughs> two, please. Oh, my okay. God. Let's see. All right. Oh yeah, Chris, I'm glad you brought up your your book um, because that would be very valuable to our listeners right now. That's uh, take three. Okay, just um, with more feeling, please. <laughs> more feeling, Chris. Your book changed my life. I am so glad that I read it, and um, I, I make it every New Year's resolution to reread it at least once a month. And I make my children read it. I make my wife read it to me uh, every night before I go to sleep. And I just. All right, that was a little over the board. Okay. Thanks. But you did good. Okay. You know, take three was a lot better than the first two. <laughs> okay. So in my book, From the Zoo to the Wild, I will tell you, when I first started my business, uh, we have talked about this. I was very intentional on the business I chose. I used the business planning process to not only help me select a business, but to start it. I started with a CRM system, but I didn't start with a Ferrari because all I needed to do was get on the tricycle and get out the door. So I started with a client server based, very rudimentary, small cost CRM system. In today's world, 15 and a half years later, you can get a web based system for almost nothing. These guys who tell me, hey, man, I do it all through Google Calendar and I do this and do that. These systems out there are so much more robust for a very little low investment. It's worth it. What is the difference between the tricycle that you rode in on and what you have now? So the tricycle I rode in on uh, was client server based, which means 
any guy in the field couldn't have it. So I was paper-based for my technicians in the field. Today, they have apps on their phone and they can see exactly where they're going, what they're doing, and have pictures of the job before they get there. And that gives them power. It gives them power to know what they're walking into. It gives them power of knowledge when they show up to the customer and give a plan to what they're doing. But the CRM systems that are out there today, um, and I've, I've, I've heard a lot of them. I, you know, I, I'm not going to name names right now, but I think not all fit everybody. You can go from the tricycle all the way up to the souped up Ferrari. Uh, you'll pay accordingly. Uh, but the one thing I would counsel against is, and I keep hearing guys do this because the one who asked me this last question is developing his own because he thinks he can de- 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 he can actually build the widget better than these other companies out there. Does he have experience building software? No. Okay. Yeah, and I had I I felt bad. I yeah. didn't say a word. I should have hit him directly between the eyes, going, "What?" But he'd already built it, and he wanted to know if I wanted to buy it. I'm like, no. Of so course not. is it is it kind of an all in one system that you have? I mean, does it have the consumer follow up and roll into the reminders and the texting and all that stuff? Is that part of the platform? Now we're talking my language. Ooh, so now we're in the middle of we're between tricycle and Ferrari. Yeah, you're probably rolling out a so uh, so um, Chevy. So, uh, is it a yeah, loaner Chevy? It's, it's actually a better, it's better than Ford. It's a Chevy. Uh, <laughs> Alan drives a Ford. Yes. I got my truck back though. Thank you, Chevy. And thank you, UAW for resolving the strike. And thank you, General Motors. So, um, I think, yes, when you get a customer, you need to think about customer acquisition. I got a name, I got an address, I got a phone number, I got an email address. Get that in the one all-in-one box system that does all this stuff for you to make your job easier. I was talking to another business owner who said he used to spend two hours a day, two hours a day, making sure that one system would talk to the other and he had to key re-key in things so his estimators would go look at a job. Is that a good use of time, you think? No. Really? He's like, this whole system I use today has eliminated that. He goes, I haven't been in the system in... Two years is how long he's been on it. Two years. He said, but in the beginning, two hours a day, taking what was uh, estimated from the estimator, putting into the order system, getting the uh, parts ordered, then putting the uh, cut sheets together and the install together, and then putting it again into another system to get his other guys uh, out there to install it. So it does kind of bring up a good question because you could be penny wise and pound foolish and the tricycle just isn't enough for what you need. But then there's the other side where the Ferrari has just way more horsepower, way more buttons, way more technology than you need. How do you figure out what you need for your business? So the thing we used the last time I shifted, uh, and I shifted seven years ago. Was it a paddle shift? And it was just in the, you know, the Ferrari thing. Sorry, go ahead. Nice. Yeah. I in, And in honor of F1, uh, hitting it hard, hit the corners, get out of there, and then I hit the DRS, and I took off. <laughs> um, or um, I took a system that was web-based, and we moved to it. And uh, so I'm going to answer my own question. The technology itself uh, will check a lot of boxes, but it won't check all of them. And But you need to know the boxes you want to check and take it from, from the moment a customer tries to contact you, email, phone call, text message, however they can get to you, to the end where you invoice them and follow up with them for a review on what you've done. Take it all the way through and see all the boxes that they'll check for you. And it sees if, if it's a, if it hits, if it's the majority, if it hits 75, 80% of them, then you probably have the group. And also what you want to look at in, in the, the, these customer and these softwares, are they going to scale with you? Are they going to keep developing and doing what they're good at, which is developing software to help you? Mm. Are they going to listen to you? Are they going to keep making your product better? Because software salespeople sometimes, you know, I'm not saying to all salespeople, you know, over promise and under deliver, but they'll tell you that they're going to continue to develop with you. And then you get this thing and it's a square peg round hole situation. And you ask for another feature and they're like, I'm sorry, we're gonna have to put that in the queue. But then in the same breath, they tell you, oh, but we, uh, but we have a quarterly enhancement queue and uh, you're in it. And uh, perhaps. I love being in a queue. Yeah. Especially a quarterly queue. Yeah. And I'm not sure what quarter, I think, I think we're talking like the quarter century queue. I think that's right. Yeah. I think the quarter, <laughs> quarter lifespan of the, uh, the, uh, the whole world earth might be one of them. So quarter millennial. Yeah. I think if you look it up, I, uh, not all one software fits at all, you know, find Facebook groups in your industry, find out who serves your industry the best. 
I key. think that's a really good point. It kind of goes back to one of our recent guests when we asked about how you vet out a, a vet a marketing person. And it's, you know, give me an example of somebody who's in my same space that you've had success with. And it's the same thing with software, don't you think? I do. Because they got to know it. They got to know what you're doing. You know, because there might be a great software for an HVAC company. And there's a lot of them out there because that's where a lot of money is. There might be a great software for an electric uh, company and a plumber and a carpet cleaner and a window cleaner and a window and in, uh, blinds installer. But you say, well, they're all the same. We are, we all, we're all transactional. But if you find somebody who's in your industry, odds are they're going to be focused on you and your industry, and they're going to help you out a lot more and not for a lot of money because they're serving your whole group. I think that's the best answer you've given so far today. It's very sage advice, Chris. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> and that was from the heart. I could tell. <laughs> Who brought this guy? Uh... <laughs> Let's go. How's your bourbon doing? Huh? I'm only uh, halfway through my vat. Oh, God. My boss. You you need one of those little kegs wrapped around your neck and a straw coming out of it. I would have made a great one of those dogs. What Saint, are those dogs? St. Bernard's. Yeah, those two. Yeah. All right, Chris. I you don't s- like them. <laughs> <laughs> what What is it? You're not quite morbidly obese? or I am. Uh, uh, right now, Yeah. I'm obese. I'm not morbidly obese. Okay. But if I lose 10 pounds... Uh-huh. I'll be solidly overweight. Solidly overweight so is that's, the goal. So that's the goal. So that's my new workout t-shirt, striving for solidly overweight. <laughs> Forget the fact that I'm in the gym five days a week. Yeah. Hmm. He may need a new plan. Okay, Chris, you seem to have a good handle. You seem to have a good handle. Seem is the key word there. On your numbers in your business, what would you tell me to focus in on and how often should I be looking at them? I am striking the Johnny Carson Karnak pose Man, from you way are back. Pinching the bridge of your nose. Right. And I'm going, hmm. Thank you, Ed. Seeming. <laughs> seemingly. <laughs> He's right. Uh, I seemingly have a good handle on my numbers. He has a great handle on his numbers. I do like to have a good handle on my numbers, as it were. So, however, uh, I always think you could be better. And uh I, I'm glad that people think that. And that was a great question that was asked of me. My first response was, I don't know if it's as good as I make it to be. I will tell you that there's been a lot of ups and downs Uh, over 15 and a half years. There's a lot of times where I went, wow, I'm missing the mark. I'm not looking at these like I should be. But I would uh, I would recommend to everybody is uh, number one, have a good set of books. It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be complicated. You have cost of goods sold, revenues on top of it. Then you have a gross profit. And then underneath that, what does it cost for you to keep the lights open and your admin stuff? Make it very simple. Keep it simple, stupid. Is what the lights I, open and the doors on? I try to, uh, but usually backwards. So uh, do yeah. you have, how real time are the numbers that you have? I'm sure you have KPIs that you look at, key performance indicators. Yep. Wouldn't it be interesting to hear what those are and uh, how, how quickly can you get a real number on those? Yeah. That, uh, all right. For me, this is where I would say, I think I'm good. And then I found somebody who's even better. Damn I look up. at them weekly and here's what I look at number of calls, number of leads, number of onsite estimates, number of jobs, dollars closed. And that's where I stop. I look at number of, uh, well, sales converted and then, uh, number of jobs completed. Okay. And dollars start that list over again. Cause that's, right. that's good. All right. Calls. Okay. Or leads coming in. I, I count the leads. Mm-hmm. So we have uh, a call. Now, now, do you qualify the leads? I mean, yes. So the number of qualified right. leads. So um, I actually have moved to number of calls and uh, inquiries because not every call is a new business inquiry. Some of the extra calls are we're not doing our job right and people are calling to follow up and find out what's going on. Right. So I watch that number two. And then the next one is number of leads, okay. which is 100% where I focused wholeheartedly watching the economy and seeing where we're going and we're a very seasonal business. So I'm watching seasons. Then I look at number of onsite estimates set up. Then I look at number of jobs completed and dollars in revenue completed. And I look at number of onsite estimates uh, converted into wins. So you look, you look at them once a week, how, how many weeks does it take before you've seen a pattern? I love that question. <laughs> Three weeks is a pattern. Okay. Three weeks. So then you spot a leak. Okay. We're not converting the calls into estimates. We have one issue. The estimates aren't turning into closes. We've got a different issue. Yeah. So for me at the size I am now, three weeks makes a trend. Which you're pretty big deal. I am pretty big deal. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've got, you know, 
uh, 19 technicians running. We've got five project managers, two different uh, sets of businesses. We got the Athens branch, which I have it even simpler uh, to look at, uh, mm -hmm. to see where we're going. But I'll give you a great example. As you come into the fall in anywhere uh, in the U.S., um, even though I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, and I grew up in Michigan, everybody's like, well, in the winter, you're pretty much shut down unless you're doing inside projects because you can't work outside. Well, we start to slow down a lot here in Atlanta as well. And so the trend that I'm seeing is we're back to seasonal adjustments. And that is we're really busy, but the leads have gone way down. So our dollars and our jobs are way up because Thanksgiving and Christmas are happening and people want the jobs done, but they don't want you in their house right now to look at a bathroom remodel or a kitchen remodel if they really don't have to do it. it so it's weird. I think, uh, you know, up North people work no matter what the weather is. And in the South, I just feel like it's not a weather related thing. It's oh, the holidays are here. I mean, we hear it in commercial real estate all the time. It's like, well, I got the holidays. I'm like, hey, Thanksgiving's two days. You you, know, you can, you know, the extra to be fair. Yeah. Thanksgiving's one day. <laughs> one. Right. Not two, but it, it's one. It's kind of, and you even said two. It's bleeding into. So Thanksgiving is coming up yep. and nobody was answering a phone last Thursday or Friday for me in commercial real estate. And I'm like, we're hundred percent commission. You know, do you want to sell a building? Do you want to buy a building? And they're not answering phones. I, and then you get the Christmas and New Year's holiday uh, yeah. put together. And again, if you're Christian and you celebrate Christmas, great. If, you, if you're not, you still celebrate Christmas because you get the opportunity to celebrate Christmas. <laughs> so we take two weeks off for Christmas and New Year's. Right. And, uh, you know, I know the rest of the world uh, takes a lot more holidays than we do. But in the U.S., that's one thing you have to get used to. So back to your uh, your question is, when do you see a trend? That's when I see a trend. When I see a trend in dropping leads in the uh, beginning of the year um, or in the spring when things are, should be going up, that's when I start to go, hmm, what's going on? When I see a trend in uh, on-site estimates not being converted, that's when I go, hmm, we have a problem. Right. And then when I see a trend in three weeks, again, of uh, jobs not being completed and revenue not going up, and that's when we go in there and you find out, oh, well, we had a rash of... Um, believe it or not, COVID's still around, and we had four technicians out one week mm. because of COVID. Or... Yeah, so because of that, you can't overreact to the numbers. But how, so when you see that trend, I guess just to beat this horse just a little bit more to death, um, calls coming in aren't turning into estimates. Are you? Do you have the ability to record calls that are coming in and you can listen to them, or do you just kind of hang out in the office like uh, the you know the creepy boss and? listening to the how your people are on the phone so what i really like to do is uh sit with them like when when they see me roll a chair up next to them they're like uh -oh. they're so excited about that you know what they always are so excited or <laughs> the eye roll and the heavy he begins <laughs> no i listen to calls so but that but those key, key performance indicators tell me where to put my focus right but i don't on monday morning look at those kpis key performance indicators and go oh look leads are down oh my god I'm going to go call every one of my advertisers or people I'm spending right. money with going, hey, what the hell's going on? Hey, Google pay-per-click. You know, I'm not digging in that way. What I'm doing is I'm looking for the trends and going and and uh, after I see a trend, then I go dig in and start listening to some phone calls or I've got actually somebody else listening to the phone calls for me now, um, which is a huge time suck, by the way. Uh, but it's it, that's how you figure out what's going down. And you have to also understand if you're in a seasonal business, it's okay to be slower. It's not a bad thing. There's a reason I'm doing strategic planning for 24 right now. Yeah. Because I'm a little slower. Yeah, we'll get into that in a minute. Yeah. So it's a good time to to do it when you're in a seasonal business. And coming off the heater that we were on, uh, coming out of COVID as a home services company, it's okay to take a breath. I'm saying that. And if you're not hearing me on this one, it's okay. Because when it happened, Sounds the like first you're time. quoting your therapist. I am. Because yeah. I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to hear that we're slow. I didn't want to hear in the second week in January that literally I had no job scheduled that week when I first started. And I was like, oh my God, I am going to die. And it's it's okay. Take a deep breath. So what I found was when things were slower in the beginning, my activities went way up. My activities were networking, advertising, figuring out what to do. Because I got to make bets right now in advertising for next year. As I'm staring at a slowdown in, you know, uh, because of the seasonal. Are we rolling into the 2024 no, no, planning to, now? 
Not yet. Well, Unless you kind of did. To. No, you just about did. Okay. Well, I can. Well, you have two other questions. Oh, then let's hit those uh, first. All right. How do you find employees or subcontractors? You know, I get asked this all the time, and I don't have a magic bullet. When I first started in 2015, uh, 20, 2008, and here we are in 2023, I brought up 2015 because that's where I made the big pivot. In, 20, in 2008, you put an ad out on Craigslist, I get 150 resumes. I mean, it would just be insane. Uh, now, my interviewing process completely sucked, uh, but I interviewed a lot of them. And I'd ask them all kinds of questions. I'd hear exactly the answers I wanted to hear because that's what they were trying to tell me. And I sat there and went, oh, you got it. I lapped it up like a lap dog, even though I was like trained. having them blow sunshine up your skirt. Yeah, right. And, I, uh, and I'm and i trained in critical behavior interviewing, and I still was screwing it up. So real quick, what's the difference between your interviewing now and back then? Yeah. So we uh, we use industry jargon. They have to talk the talk when we're talking with them so that we know that they know what they're talking about. Give me so, an example. All right. Drywall mud. If you're going to go do a drywall repair, Ellen, and I just cut out a 16 by 16 inch patch so I could replace your shower valve, I want you to go out there and change that drywall patch. How would you do it? Go. So I get the cutty thing and I uh, I lay it down with a measury thing and draw a line on it. And so I, I appreciate your time today. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, no, but that so the, the right answer and th- there are no wrongs or rights. There are rights. Uh is the guy who cuts it out makes a square patch um, on a 16 by 16 in today's world. I still would go old school and do a drywall patch, uh, meaning I put drywall in there and float it out. But I would use uh, a combination of five minute, 20 minute, 45 minute and dry mix 90. I never use bucket mud. And if guy can say that to me, I know he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, I never use bucket mud either. You lying. You lying to your you, teeth, you, bro. You, you thought about it for a second, though. You almost hired I did. You almost hired me. I almost. You know what? But you can tell when you're doing that, you can tell if they know what they're doing. So when you go hang a door that's pre hung, how do you hang the door? Yeah, that's a good one. See, those technical questions in your field tell you if those guys know what they're talking about. Because if he says, Well, the first thing I do is I uh, put the door in. And then I, um, I screw, uh, these things, uh, you're like, oh boy, you're dead. So you go hinge side first and you know, to take out screws on the hinge and you know, to use shims, use two shims, not one shim because one shim always knocks it out of level. These guys need to know that stuff, but that's what would you have asked before though? In the beginning? Yeah. Yeah. Had none of those. Had you ever, questions. you know, you could, I would ask, doors. how do you handle customers? <laughs> um, give me an example of a, a difficult customer you had. What did you do to fix it? Um, let's dive into that a little bit more. Okay. How did that make you feel? No, I didn't do that, but uh, oh my God, it was horrible. Horrible. And now you can flesh them out pretty quick because yeah. the only way I can do it, and the question is, how do you find people? In the beginning, it was Craigslist. Today, Craigslist is dead. Don't even try. I've heard people, but here's the other thing I would tell you. Try a bunch of stuff and see what sticks in the wall in your market because we don't have the magic bullet. I've tried. I've tried putting the magic bullet in my chamber, and I've tried it a couple times, and it's cost me a lot of money, and it hasn't worked for me. Or you hire, you hire uh, who do we just have on? Well, Tina. Yeah. Well, all right. Uh, to be fair, in my market, Tina McKenna and qualified applicants has been has been a magic bullet. They have done good stuff. It takes a ton off your plate, and they're experts at marketing. They're experts at marketing and figuring out how to do this because that's what we are in today's uh, employment world is you have to be a marketing company to um, attract employees. Yeah. She does a great job of it. Now I have to spend some money with them, um, but I am happy to spend that. I have never once, as soon as that invoice comes across the desk, I forward it immediately and say approved, approved, approved. Well, it kind of reminds me of uh, the the dude that spent two hours a day trying to make his software talk. I mean, it's the same thing with hiring. And you can be just fumbling around or you can have an expert help you who's very reasonably priced. I mean, what's your time worth? It, and she is way we's reasonably priced. Um, we, 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 I ask you, grab it. You are a we web it. So no, she, uh, qualified applicants has been a great, uh, magic bullet. I've tried a number of other things, uh, social media. I've tried a guy who is nationally known, uh, for being able to find people in my market you just don't know because I'm talking about my market. How about referral programs? Referral programs did not work mm. for me with my employees because my employees, you have to remember who I've got. They think that, that you bring somebody on, it's going to take food off their table. 
they're not there to help everybody else. Mm. They're 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 there as lone wolves trying to better their family. And my wolf pack offers them an opportunity to better themselves and their family better. And when they look at themselves, they're like, I'm the best wolf in the pack. I don't want you. Do you go after other people's employees? I have never done that. Although I have had a number of business owners tell me they've done it. One of the, one of the people I know uh, started his entire business off uh, attracting two other guys. And that sounds stealing and it sounds bad, right? It just seems dirty. It does seem dirty. And um, I couldn't do it because I used to go into Home Depot and try to uh, uh, just solicit other guys. And that's exactly what it sounded like. I was a little creepy, bro. <laughs> I couldn't pull that off. That's just not the way I made up. That's not the way I can work. I could not uh, metamorphosize myself into that. So I couldn't do it. All right. So I need other people to do it. And qualified applicants and Tina and Megan have done a great job. All right. Uh, Chris. <clears throat> What are you doing to prepare for 2024? And what do you see as the greatest concern in your business? Alan, you know, I've been talking about this. I can't wait to get into this. Woo. I can't. This is it, baby. We're going to rock it. I'm so excited, Alan, that I probably can't do this in this episode. You're going to have to come back, everybody. I appreciate you guys so much. I appreciate Alan. I appreciate all of you taking the time to be with us. Listen to us, keep following us, keep checking us out. But more importantly, I want you to be successful. I really do. We've been doing this for two years, uh, two and a half almost now. And one of the things we've talked about is, are we talking to you? I think we are. And I, I, think feel, I feel like it. I mean, I don't have a, a de definitive face in mind, but I mean, it's like, you know, you got Mark from Milwaukee and the dude from Buffalo and the guy from Spokane that keep reaching out to you. And it's just kind of creating this image in my mind of the... You know, some guy in a truck, some girl in a truck, whatever, just having a good time, chuckling along with our bad jokes and your excessive lifestyle. It's great. That's right, baby. So come on back. Get going. We're going to talk 2024 planning. How do we do it? What is going on? And what's life all about? Keep going to the top. We're out of here. Cheers. <laughs>